Again, we're here this morning with uh, Mr. Jack Peterson, uh, WBSM newscaster. Jack, uh, the program is History of Media in New Bedford, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule. I know how busy you are. Mm -hmm. And I want you to take us back to your first starting days, I believe in Lowell, Massachusetts? Started in, uh, in Lowell, Mass, 1963. Wow. I was a student at uh, the Leland Powers School of Radio, Television, and Theater. It's a two-year school in Boston. And uh, it was between my freshman and senior year in between the two years. And I just sent a very unprofessional note, almost not even, not even the legal side, just kind of a scrap of paper, to the program director in Lowell, WLLH, and uh, said, I'm a student at Leland Power School. I'm looking for some experience in the summertime. Can you offer me that experience? And I got a call back uh, at my house when I lived in Lynn. And uh, the person talked to my mother who said, uh, yes, uh, he should come up and, and talk to us. And I didn't believe that it was really happening. Uh, the reason I went to school was because I didn't think I could just walk into a radio station and say, look at me, hire me. So I needed some background. So anyway, uh, they weren't hiring one person, or they weren't auditioning one person. They were going to audition 15 or 20 people. So I was one of the 15 or 20 that actually did an audition. Uh, they had me read a commercial, and I believe some news. And I got the job because the commercial was for Pollard's Department Store in Lowell back in the 60s. I called it Pollard's, which was correct. And I understand everyone else called it pole arts. So they, they hired an 18-year-old or 19-year-old kid on the spot to uh, work summer times. So it was a summer relief job. So you were hired as a newsman, not no, as no, a DJ? No, no, I was a DJ. DJ. Okay. DJ. Uh, and at the time, the station had absolutely no format. I mean, they had a bunch of, like a great album collection. But it wasn't pop. It was all, all over the place. Uh, prior to the new owners coming in. There were two young men from Philadelphia who came in and bought the station. And they subsequently turned it into like a top 40 station in the 60s. And uh, they grew to like me. So when I got out of school, even before I graduated, they fired the nighttime guy, for whatever reason, because, and they inserted me into the nighttime shift, which was seven to, seven to 11, uh, seven to one. And I worked that shift from uh, 1964 to 1967, uh, playing the you know the songs of the day, the Beatles, British Invasion, that stuff. Then I subsequently worked my way up the ladder in Lowell to where I became program director and then morning DJ. And then in 1980, uh, the gentleman who worked for the company that owns WNBH, Hall Communications, also had a relationship with the other radio station in Lowell, WCAP. And as the story goes, I don't know whether it's true or not, he, he said, the owner of WCAP said, can you offer this guy, Jack, a job down in New Bedford? Because we, we want to get him out of the market. So the representative from Hall Communications called me, said we have an opening down in New Bedford. It's a morning show, WNBH. Come on down, you love it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I knew that Gil Santos had worked in New Bedford. So before I came down, I called Gil at WBZ. I said, Gil, I got an offer to come down to WNBH. Uh, they're going to pay me X amount of money. What do you think? Oh, you can live like a king down there for that. So <laughs> subsequently, I pulled up my, my roots in Lowell and I moved down here to New Bedford in 1980 and worked at WNBH till 1997. Uh, there was a short period, about six months, where they switched me over to the FM to a Cat Country, where I did night times at Cat Country. I was a country boy. Uh, they even bought me boots, jeans, and a fancy Garth Brooks shirt to wear. <laughs> but uh, that didn't last long, and then I went back to the AM side, where I did a morning show with my wife. And we became Captain Jack and First Mate Lenny. And that lasted till uh, 1997, when, uh, as what normally happens in this business, uh, see you later. Was that WMYS? 
No, that was NBH. NBH. Yeah. Okay. But, NBH uh, seems to be a thread with the, the people I'm talking to. It's really? Like they either touched NBH for a while or they stayed with NBH mm -hmm. for a while. Um, well, I was there at for one time. That was a powerful station. I was there for 17 years. Uh, just with a short stint at, at Cat Country, right. uh, most of the time doing morning drive, uh, other times doing an afternoon shift, uh, and it, it reached a point where they were going in a different direction. They they uh, they were going more automated. Didn't have a need for live people yeah. on the air, so they we parted company. Through your experience, how much of it has been uh, news versus? Uh, Radio, uh, well, DJ. well, the first, uh, let's see, 63 to 97, how many years is that? That was mostly, that was all DJ work. Uh, so that, that was... Uh, More than 30 years. Yeah. And then when I left NBH looking for work in the market, there's only <laughs> one other station in town, and that's BSM. And uh, I talked to Jim Marshall, who was the news director. And uh, he said, well, we have a young lady who's on the air, but uh, her father is very sick and she's going to tend to him. So if you can come by and, you know, do news uh, in the afternoons, uh, that, that'd be fine. It's not necessarily full time, but it could be. What year was that? That was 1997. Okay. And then in 1998, this, this girl left the station to, full time and they hired me full time to do news in the... Uh, the afternoon, and that lasted for um, three, four, five years. Worked with Jim for a while before he left to join you folks at Cable Access. Uh, Lynn Poyat was the news director, and over the past, I don't know how many years, several years, Jim Phillips has been the news director. So, so, so the hours that you worked may have bounced around, but basically you've stayed the same in news. Yes. Uh, Initially, I worked in the afternoon in news, uh, and then over the past four or five or six years, I've been working in the mornings, which I prefer, to be honest with you. Uh, I did mornings for all those years as a DJ. Your body kind of gets used to that the circadian rhythm, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I like getting in early, getting out early, and, uh, you know, I can leave at noontime and have the rest of the day to do whatever. I, I really... I'm interested in the technology changes. Mm -hmm. um, you started 40 years ago or more. 50. 50. Okay, that's, that's 1963 was a big year, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, it was. Yeah. W were you on duty during the I was days? working uh, part time uh, Sundays and Saturdays. And uh, what the station did uh, during the time of Kennedy's assassination was play classical music all the time. No one knows. No news. I mean, there might have been some news, but mostly classical music. We weren't affiliated with the network, so we, we, we just, whatever news we did was generated locally. But what I, what I can remember is a stack of, of uh, LPs with classical music, Beethoven, Bach, all that stuff. And that lasted for uh, three or four days. And then there was an era when everything was on carts. There was an era when I first got there, before the station was taken over by these new young men, these revolutionaries from Pennsylvania, that uh, the commercials, the, the jingles, you know, if you had a, a jingle for a commercial, were on reel-to-reel -reel tape. And there was an actual engineer in the other room who would cue it up and play it. These new guys from Philadelphia came in with cart machines, and that was the start of that era, which are, you know, little... Uh, kind of like eight tracks, basically. Uh, but the machines they brought in were clunky old machines. You could hear the machines start. Uh, not terribly sophisticated, but it was another step. And we, we use reel-to-reel -reel tape all the time. How long have you been doing digital now? Huh. Seems like forever, but I'm sure it's not. Uh, has to be at least eight or nine years. Uh, we, we got a system in from uh, the Metro News Source came in with these computers for us. They provide news uh, on these computers, also combines the Associated Press, because before you had an Associated Press machine, teletype machine that would, you know, go all day long. But this has revolutionized that aspect of it, because we used to have, you had to print up a lot, a 
a whole bunch of paper. He used boxes of paper because yeah, everything was printed. Now on the computer you can pick and choose whatever stories you see. It's the same service. It's just you don't have to print everything up. You can cut and paste and do what you want. Uh, and the recording aspect is good too because in the old days you'd record someone like for a news bite, a mayor, city councilor, whoever, newsmaker, and you'd put it on reel to reel tape. And if you wanted to edit it, you had to, you know, find the exact spot you want to cut with a with a razor blade and then splice it together and do all that kind of stuff. Now you can just do it with a computer, cut and cut and paste. It's it's hard to remember back in the old days, but uh, that's what that's what they did. Uh, and nowadays you just uh, highlight it, cut it, paste it, and away you go. So it's, it's made a little heck of a lot easier. And that's... With all the changes that you've experienced, mm -hmm. I get a feeling you're going to go on forever. <laughs> well, my wife says, when are you going to retire? And I said, well, what would I do? Yeah. You know, I, I don't have, you know, I'm not a great fisherman. I'm not going out to the to get the next Moby Dick. And I, I, I don't do much woodworking or, you know, whittling in the, in the old workshop down in the basement. So. And the park is only so big to walk the dog. <laughs> right. It's only so many miles you can walk it. How many, how many, so many trees you can sniff for the dog, not me. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know. I guess I'll go on till either I lose my voice, which is the, your main, you know, on the radio. That's that's your instrument, and uh, people don't know whether you're 25 or 105 as long as the voice still has that timber, you know. I think that your voice makes people think that you're 25 and that you're going to <laughs> another 25 years. You're, you're one of the true professionals in this business. Mm -hmm. Jack, I cannot tell you how much of a, an honor it is to be well, sitting across from you. Well, it's it, it's nice to, to reminisce about the good old days of someone who appreciates it, uh -huh. uh, can understand it, because uh, not a whole lot of people go back that far. Uh, I know that you're going to leave here and start preparing for the next newscast, so I just want to thank you for taking time out of your super busy schedule to, to our professor and uh, well, sit for an interview. My pleasure. Good.